Hello everyone and welcome to another Craft Conversations. Today I'm here with Susan Stephen. Susan, how are you today? I'm doing pretty well. How about you? I, I'm doing great. Uh, in spite of the snow outside. <laughs> yes, yeah, that was a surprise this morning. Um, so why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, well, I'm Susan Lee Stephen, as Bruno has introduced me. Um, I recently, most recently, might be known in the craft community as the jeweler behind Susan Lee Studios. Um, but if we go a little bit further back in time, um, I moved to Newfoundland in 1999. I'm originally from Yellowknife. And I've always had a passion for craft. I always did craft as a child. It was always a valuable part of our activities as a family. And um, I took a lot of craft classes when I was a youngster. I most, mostly in pottery actually, is where I started uh, working with uh, craft. Um, but I've always loved doing hands-on activities. In kindergarten, I was always in the, in the workshop station with the hammer and the nails and the blocks of wood. I don't even know if they allowed ha allow hammer and nails in kindergarten classrooms anymore, but they did when I was a child. Um, so I've always really loved making things and exploring what can be made and how it can be made. Uh, since moving to Newfoundland, um, I also did the textile studies program at the College of the North Atlantic. Um, and then I went into a professional career, career as a welder. Uh, I've learned a lot of leather working skills from my husband. And yeah, so I've kind of enjoyed a wide range of craft activities throughout my lifetime. So like you have like ceramics, textiles, welding, jewelry making, and I know the most recent you're doing architectural uh, design. Technology. Technology. So uh, is how those all all those craft areas like combine to make you to make you love craft so much? Like how, how do you see the intersection of them? Um, I think because I really see the value in the handmade and how we all are creative individuals. That's a, a, our gift as being human that we, we can create. Um, I find it really sad when people think they aren't creative because if you can create, you are creative. The bar really isn't set very high. You don't have to be a master oil painter or mm -hmm. a sculptor to be considered creative. If you can, if you cook a meal or if you build a snowman with your kids, you're creative. Um, so I think there's a lot of value in exploring all the avenues we have available to us in terms of creativity. And I've always found that fascinating. I kind of jokingly, I've never actually done it, but I've jokingly thought that if I got a business card made, I'd like to have Susan Stevens skills collector as my <laughs> title, because I, I don't know what other category, you know, I, I've, I've tried so many different skills, I'm not equally accomplished at all of them as, as is the case with most people, but um, I really find it fascinating to, especially across disciplines, to learn one technique in one field and then see how it can be applied in another. For example, um, I did some printmaking. Uh, I think I didn't include that in my earlier list, but I, I took a workshop from Philippa Jones uh, years and years ago um, in etching uh, because I was interested in learning etching as a, to use it as a technique in jewelry. So the, the way etchers, printmaking etchers, approach the, the process is radically different than the way jewelers approach etching as a process. But just learning from a different discipline allowed me to kind of bring a new perspective to, of etching to, the jewelry, to my jewelry. So I really find those, those intersections that you sometimes have to force a bit because disciplines do tend to be a little bit um, isolated in their own little worlds. Uh, but I, I really enjoy bringing those techniques across disciplines and seeing where they, they can go. One thing that you touched base that I, I think is very interesting is that you said everyone is creative. And like sometimes, like I would say most of the times, people tend to undervalue their creative skills just because they, as you said, like they're not a master painter or, or they don't dominate like a, a skill in craft. Uh, 
what are your thoughts in that? Like, I, I think that like, as you said, like everyone is creative, but uh, how people perceive that creativity and how they can actually value their time and the work that they do. Yeah, um, I hear that a lot. I've, I've taught a few craft workshops uh, and so many people come into my workshops and saying they, they're interested in learning a skill, but they're really not creative at all. And they laugh that off. And I, I, it kind of makes me sad because um, I think, unfortunately, I think the reason that creativity has been put up on this pedestal has to do with the commodification of it. And if you can't make something that's valued at a level that, will, that people will pay money for, then perhaps you're not creative, which I think is a bunch of hogwash, <laughs> to be <laughs> honest. It's, um, as I said earlier, like if, you, if, you, if you're in the backyard making a snowman with your kids, you are being creative. You have created something. So by definition, you are, you are creative. And I think just because, um, I think all it takes is, is an interest in a skill. Uh, as the spark and if you can find it a skill that you're interested in learning you're not going to be amazing at it the first time you do it but that's that's the beginning of creating something and whatever that first thing you create is might not be beautiful people might definitely not pay money for it but that doesn't mean that you weren't creative in making it and I think we need to value that um, characteristic of creativity for what it is. It's the fact that we as humans can create and can learn from that level of creativity and advance. If you're, if you lose interest in a skill, that's an entirely separate thing. And you might lose interest because you're not actually that talented at a particular technique. That doesn't mean you're not a creative person. Yeah, I, I think that like, and eh. And I see that a lot working in the gallery. People come and they say like, oh, uh, I wish I could do that. And, uh, and I mean, like, do you make something? And they're like, yeah, like I bake or I, um, I learned how to sew with my grandparents or so. So there is like the creative incentive is always there, like especially uh, in today's world where you can see like people sharing their craft and in social media and sharing these skills and like, their techniques and how can you do it you see that there is a lot of ways for you to try to understand and and get into as you said a skill uh, but the creativity is something inherent from every human being uh, in the topic of like being creative and sharing craft do you see that like the contemporary world facilitate that sharing among like skills and definitely yeah i think certainly um we're kind of living in this hopefully temporary artificial reality right now where um we're sharing so much online uh, but i think in a way that's been a bit of an awakening for many people to realize that there is a world beyond their computer screen in a way because the computer screen is facilitating the sharing of of skills but um, like I think of just something as simple as the, the booming jigsaw puzzle industry right now, while we're all self isolating because of COVID-19, um, people are realizing you actually, to, to feel fulfilled at the end of the day, you have to step away from your technology. Um, I'm going to computer technology because technology is a big broad word as well. Um, and engage in a tactile way with your world. Um, and I think that also speaks a bit to the uh, resurgence of um, interest in, for example, home, the homesteading movement seems to be booming lately. Uh, and gratefully, we have this computer technology in order to share um, the progress and the hurdles that people are encountering. And there's, there's this knowledge exchange, which I think is really valuable. Um, I think by having to spend more time at home as we are, we're finding ways to maybe reflect on what we value in our mm -hmm. home and family environments. And I'm hoping that that'll help people rediscover uh, some craft um, techniques or disciplines or just a skill that they wanna learn. And thankfully, because we are so connected uh, through co computer technology, 
it's it's easily done these days. What I find fascinating about like the the learning of new techniques is that uh, they're all traditional techniques and people are applying them in different ways. So as you said, like you learn how to do etching and printmaking, what was a traditional technique, and then you apply that in a contemporary way in jewelry making. Uh, that connection between preserving the traditional craft and then moving that forward is something that we're seeing a lot these days. And we're seeing a lot uh, in, not only in fine and contemporary craft, but also in craft-based art. Uh, and I think that's where the creativity sparks as well. Like, how can I change that traditional way to to make it more contemporary, make it more uh, a signature from the artist? Uh, I know some of your work, like you really combine those things in in terms of like getting a traditional technique and moving that forward. Uh, there is a line of thought that you go through, or you're just experimenting. Um. Personally, I think I do a lot of experimenting uh, when I'm trying to bring a traditional technique forward uh, in my work. Uh, I think there's a lot of, uh, it's something I'm really passionate about is not, not losing these traditional techniques, uh, craft techniques. Um, some of that I think is probably due, unfortunately, as I said earlier, to the, the value that we put on craft and whether it's valuable as a commodity. Um, and I think the way we can preserve some of the skills uh, from dying out is by reinterpreting them in a contemporary way. Uh, another aspect that I think is really valuable about traditional craft skills is that it connects us to our natural world. Um, if you can see the value in a well-crafted, uh, well, back in the day, I'll use the example of a wagon wheel. If you could do, see the value of, in a well-crafted wagon wheel, you can see the value in the tree that it came from to make that wagon wheel. And if we move that forward in time, the same could be applied to um, a shovel handle or an ax handle. And if you can see the value in a well-crafted shovel or ax handle, then you can also see the value in the tree that it came from. So I think there's a, especially as we're trying to awaken ourselves to what's happening to our natural world, there's um, there's really direct ties between these traditional skills and how we preserve our environment. Yeah, uh, and you you bring a lot of the the natural environment into your work as well. Is that something that like when you think on your architectural technology and your past work in craft, is that something that you try to combine them when creating your new projects? I think so, yeah. I've, um, I find nature really inspiring, as many craftspeople do, and I do try to share uh, a bit of my passion and love for, for the environment in my work. Um, that being said, I think there's, there, there's only, it's really exciting to me, and I haven't really broached this in my craft practice yet, but it's really exciting to me how uh, technology is augmenting our appreciation of traditional craft. I was quite a latecomer to the technological revolution. I was a bit of a Luddite until my late 20s um, and didn't embrace computer technology at all. But I think there's a lot of value. I can see the value now in uh, a lot of the technologies we're embracing that help to preserve and promote uh, traditional skills. Things um, perhaps as simple as, I believe, if I can use the example, it's a, Controversial one, perhaps, for many people, of the burning of uh, Notre Dame Cathedral. That is a, a phenomenal piece of craft history. Craft, to me, is everything. There, everything in the world is craft to me. I, I see it in the buildings. I see it in the way a sidewalk is constructed. I mean, everything is, at its bare bones beginning, uh, a type of craft. Um, but that uh, the cathedral burning down was a great loss of a craft historical craft object on a grand scale but still a craft object but i believe there was um some 3d imaging done of the building to help preserve what remained and also to carry forward that legacy of the craft that did exist 
and might have been lost in a fire, but the technique still can be preserved if we can embrace a technological way of archiving that uh, information. That's, yeah, I, I hadn't thought about that in terms of like what the technology is doing for craft these days. We've yeah. been, we've been doing a lot of like, uh, the art world went completely digital with this situation that we're living now, the COVID-19, and that it's kind of like, that eventually is going to become an archival material for the future generations to, to understand that. Uh, and as you said in the beginning, like everyone is creative in, in a sense, and like the creativity is showing through all those projects and, and online uh, activities that are happening. Uh, several museums are doing online classes for kids and like distributing things that they can do with things that they have at home. Uh, so in terms of the uh, technology and the environment, uh, there is a huge connection between the two of them now. Like I was part of, of uh, Earth Day exhibition that happened online, which for me was something completely new. Like I never did an online exhibition before. <laughs> and the theme that came through was like uh, the primordial craft that you can do at home with what you have. And I think that that's pretty much like what you were talking that like in this time, like we are rediscovering the traditional techniques and, and rediscovering the, the way we can create craft. In, in that sense, uh, how are you moving forward in your work uh, in terms of like keep creating, keep, keep innovating, uh, but like not a lot allowing yourself to leave the house to, to get that natural, nature inspiration that you always use? Um, yeah, that's, that's an interesting question to be pondering now because I'm relatively new to my latest career as an architectural technologist. Um, and I have a lot of people asking me, well, uh, am I still making jewelry to sell? And, uh, you know, what, where they can find my work now. Um, and certainly being isolated at home uh, has really brought me to uh, kind of focus on where I want to go with my creative practice. Um, certainly I gave the professional craftsperson at a, a good try on for uh, five or six years as a jeweler selling uh, selling professionally. But as I've stepped away from that into this new career, I've kind of enjoyed not having to market my work. And I think that's caused me to reflect more, as I say earlier, on how we often value uh, creativity and craft and the products that we make solely based on whether they can be a commodity in the marketplace. And it's been certainly being stuck more at home. I still go for an evening walk. So that's enjoyable, but you know, certainly, yeah, my, my world has shrunk as everybody else's has as well, um, has, has brought into focus how, how much we can enjoy just making for the sake of making. And I'm, I've been, Take I, I got a spindle for Christmas. Uh, I shared a bit of that on social media earlier uh, of my attempts to spin again. And I haven't, I haven't done that since the, I did the textile studies program. And mostly it's because often as a craft producer in the marketplace, you have to set aside all of those hobbies because there isn't time for hobbies when you're trying to make a living. So I've really been enjoying not having to think about making work to sell um, and just seeing where that's going to take me now. Um, so yeah, I think it's, it's just kind of refreshing, although it is difficult for craft producers who are trying to struggle in this marketplace as, as curtailed it, as it has been with our current conditions. Um, there's a bit of a refreshing balance that I hope some people can find in, in just having a bit of time to explore something that doesn't have to be sold, a technique that doesn't have to be sold. Well, thank you so much for being with us here today. Uh, I think it was a great conversation and like it does bring a lot of questions that we as craftspeople need to ask ourselves, like, am I in the right path? Should I take some time for myself and like create 
things that are not going to be sellable just for the sake of like creating and keeping uh, our practice going in, in a different direction, in a different way. Um, is that, are there any last things you'd like to say to everyone that is watching now? Um, well, I think it's, I, I would like to emphasize that it's, it's, I think it's such an important role that professional craftspeople have in sharing their knowledge and sharing their skills. Um, and I applaud them all. It wasn't the, it wasn't the right path for me. I'm not a business person, but uh, certainly the craftspeople out there who are sharing the, the skills that they've learned and are um, bringing handmade products and the work that goes into those handmade products to the greater population, I think uh, I applaud them. It's, it's a hard, hard work to do for a life, for a, for a living. Thank you so much. Thank you, Bruno. Thank you for your time.